Hello everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel. I'm very happy you're here to join me on this week's episode of Behind the Scenes. Today I wanna to talk about cameras, photography. Uh, namely because it's amazing how many things I've learned in these few months that have passed that I have been able to apply directly to my understanding and to my application of concept art and illustration. It's remarkable and it blows my mind how many principles are not default knowledge for illustrators and fantasy artists when these two arts are so closely interconnected. And even furthermore, people who do know about photography but don't apply this in the fantasy art realm or in the illustration realm. So today's video is step one in bridging that gap between the two. Now, if you're a professional photographer, I'm not gonna teach you anything you don't know already. I myself am an amateur, a very passionate amateur, but an amateur nonetheless. But if you aren't, then consider this your first beginner course on one of the many facets of photography. Today's lesson is going to be about focal length. And again, I'm not gonna give you any scientific explanations of anything as far as that goes, but in layman's terms, focal length refers to how different types of lenses, different types of depths of lenses, depending on the glass, depending on the length of the barrel, depending on the size of the sensor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, how that distorts the light that enters into the camera and affects what you see in the shot. In the case of a neutral lens, depending on the type of camera, either a 35 millimeter, or a 50 millimeter or a little bit more or less, that would recreate what the human eye sees to a certain degree. So as far as how far things are in the scene, as far as how distorted everything is in the scene, it's very close to what the human eye is going to see. If you're dealing with a shorter focal length, such as a 10 or a 12 or 14 millimeter, those tend to create a very wide effect. So it takes in a lot of stuff in the peripheral, but the trade-off for that is that it really exaggerates the depth of things. So things that are really close appear to be super close, and things that are really far appear to be super far off into the distance. It's distorting reality. It's creating a different image than what the human eye sees. Contrary-wise, you can get into a telephoto range, like a 70, 100, 200, 400, 800, whatever the case might be. And what that does is it narrows your peripheral view but it compresses the scene. So it takes things that are way off into the distance and it brings it up close. So if you have two people that are standing close together, let's say they're about this far apart and we look at it in three dimensions, using a standard lens, it'll look like a standard distance between two people. But if you use a wide angle lens, it's gonna feel like this. Whereas if you use a telephoto lens, it's gonna to start to feel more like that. They're gonna feel more close together. Now for the sake of demonstration and explanation, I'm going to share with you which lenses I use to shoot them. I'm gonna actually show you the actual lenses themselves. And I'm gonna show you this example of a few test shots that I took at different focal lengths and using different lenses. I also at the bottom have a little kind of makeshift chart of where I was in the shot in relation to all of these objects. So as you can see here, we have the mailbox, which is our main focal point. And that's the mailbox over here. Then there's me taking the picture. And here are the two lampposts on both sides. So we can see it here and here. And the two lampposts that were fairly close to each other way off in the distance that you can see fairly well right over there. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. My main focal point was that mailbox. So no matter where I was, no matter what type of shot I composed, I tried to make it so that mailbox occupied the same amount of space in my frame each time. What this required me to do, whether I'm zoomed in or using a wide angle lens, was to physically move closer to the subject or move further away. And that distance, that distance that I had to travel to reframe this shot could be quite dramatic, depending on the focal length. So if we look at the bottom one over here, at our 10 millimeter, this is our wide angle lens. And I shot this using the Samyang uh, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter 2.8, it's a manual lens. And you can see here that's even got a bit of a rounded lens to the front of it, I can get that in focus, okay? It looks something like this, and here's the lens itself, okay? Now, you're gonna notice a little bit of a distortion on this mailbox. And the, one of the reasons why is because it's trying to suck in more information laterally than my human eye sees. So it's creating a bit of what's known as barrel distortion in the shot. Where was I placed in this scene? Well, it might appear that I'm standing about four or five, maybe even six feet away from it. But in reality, 
I was actually right here. I could physically reach out right to the side of me and touch it. But because of this barrel distortion, it's pushing these things away from me, okay? Also, pay attention to what's way off in the distance. If you look way, way, way off in the distance, you're gonna notice this tiny little sign way off in the distance right there. If I zoom away, it's but a little pixel off in the distance like that. That's far further than what my eye actually saw when I was looking at the shot. So pay attention to that exaggerated depth of the shot. Buildings off in the distance, trees off in the distance, they're really pushed far away. Now at 18 millimeters, which I shot using this particular lens that I generally shoot my art talks, at least these art talks. It's my Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 art lens. But I could have also shot it with this lens if I wanted to, 10 to 18 Canon lens. Okay, they both shoot at 18. Gives you, a, it's still a wide angle lens, but that sign off in the distance is getting a little bit closer. Also pay attention to the street sign over here, this lamppost. Notice how we can see the entire lamppost here the lamppost is up here. So we've actually cut out a lot of it. We're losing some of that peripheral vision. The sign off in the distance appears a little bit closer. Then we get into 35, again, shot with the same lens with my Sigma. And you can see here, this at 35 lens on my particular ca camera, mine is a crop sensor camera or an APS-C camera. And it's the Canon 80D for anybody interested. And in this shot, on a crop sensor, 35 is very close to what you'd have with a normal human eye. On a full frame sensor, you're probably looking at more of a 50 millimeter lens. It gives you more peripheral in your shot when you're working on a full frame sensor, okay? And in this, this is very close to what I saw when I was actually taking the shot myself. To demonstrate where I was located in both of these shots, at 18 millimeters, I was located about here. And here, if you look at the 35 millimeters, you see where that post is right to the side? Well, that's because I was, Pretty much right there, maybe a little bit further. So there I was at 35 millimeters. Not a huge difference, but significant nonetheless. Then we get into 70 millimeters, and 70 millimeters is starting to flirt with telephoto. We're starting to create a little bit of compression. Compression means taking what's in the background and foreground and compressing them together, making them look like they're closer together in distance. Okay, so here you can see that we're actually starting to bring that sign quite close to us in comparison to here. Where it was way off in the distance here where it's starting to have far more presence. We can see it in the scene now. It's not present, so to speak, but we definitely see it. And once we get into the 100 millimeter, now we're starting to push more and more into the telephoto range. Now it's starting to have quite a lot of presence in my shot. We've eliminated a lot of what's happening in the peripheral. You can even clearly see the park, which was pretty much right next to the sign. Then we get into 135 and finally 200 millimeters where we're actually starting to cut out some of that sign, we're getting that close to the shot. And you can, if this was in focus, you'd probably be able to read what it said right here. That's how close we are. Notice how little of the scene, we've completely eliminated the park off to the shot, and we've really pulled that scene right up and close. So you can see it has a dramatic effect. Now, for us as artists, just knowing this is irrelevant. It's helping you understand the distortion of a different scene, depending on how you manipulate light and the different types of lenses that you use. But how do you use this in the artistic and practical sense? How do you decide between one type of lens or another, depending on the type of story that you're trying to tell? Well, in the case where you're dealing with, let's say, a more neutral focal length, like a 35, a 50, within that range, because it's replicating what the human eye sees quite well, just in terms of depth and distortion, it can convey more of a you're there in the action with them. It creates more of a real life type of feeling, kind of a documentary type of feel to it. Distortion, on the other hand, whether you're using a wide angle lens or a telephoto lens, because it's distorting what your eye sees in reality, there's a bit of an emotional disconnect. It feels like you're feel looking at more of an abstraction, more form of artistic expression, rather than actually being there in the moment and experiencing something in real life. It creates that kind of warped world type of situation. In both cases, depending on the type of mood, depending on the type of story that you're trying to convey to your audience, working with a wide angle lens or a telephoto lens can help enhance that, exaggerate that distorted reality to help enhance the mood and the emotional goal of your shot, okay? Oh yeah, and before I move forward, you might be curious to know, at 70 millimeters, I stepped off the curve. At 135 millimeters, I was standing right in the middle of the street and at 200 millimeters, I'd actually crossed the street. That's how far away I was from the mailbox, yet it looks like I'm 
not even 10 feet away from it. Pretty interesting, okay? What I've done here is I've recreated a couple of epic movie scenes for copyright reasons. Of course, I'm not gonna take screenshots from movies because I don't wanna, I don't wanna be demonetized for what it's worth. But what I've done is I've recreated a couple of little quick scenes. I didn't put too much time or planning into these shots, just kind of picked these different angles and different focal lengths and I, just, and I took some shots with them. But what I hope that they demonstrate is how these different stories can be conveyed, what different things you start to experience emotionally looking through these different focal lengths where I haven't done anything to change the placement of any of these actors in the shot, okay? Or very minimally. I tried to recreate the same shot using different focal lengths and different compositions, all right? So if we look at the top here, we have this heart-thumping chase of a velociraptor chasing after this cute little girl over here, okay? The cute girl is being played by Rainbow Dash? No, C Celestia, Queen Celestia, I can't remember. And baby, bald head baby Velociraptor, uh, T-Rex off in the distance. At a 10 millimeters, at 10 millimeters, look at the size of the pony next to the baby. Notice how the, the pony's right up in your face and the baby's off in the distance, one half the size, at least in terms of screen real estate. One of the things that it does is it exaggerates. When you use a wide angle lens, it pushes things up in your face. It kind of forces your attention. Look at my hand, it's hard to ignore it. And my head is just a little, little speck off in the distance. That's what working with a wide angle lens can do. And right now I'm shooting at 18 millimeters. So there's a bit of a wide angle lens type of effect taking place right now, okay? The other thing that it can do is it can convey a sense of speed. That's why a lot of action shots, if you think like World of Warcraft concept art or League of Legends, a lot of that, you know, dramatic, push and pull of that focal length creates more dr drama in the shot, getting that deep and intense sense of foreshortening in your shot. I can compose my entire head in my hand like that. It's pretty cool, okay? However, I don't feel very threatened by this T-Rex chasing after the little pony here in the foreground. That, that baby feels very pushed off in the distance and I can sense that space between the two. But when I push into a 100 millimeter lens right over here, when I push into it here, we can see that that baby's starting to feel like it's really starting to catch up on the pony. Now the baby's head is taking up half of the screen next to the pony. So we really feel that that baby's really coming up close. I haven't done anything to change the distance between these two. In, this, in the third and fourth examples, they're both shot at exactly the same place at 200 millimeters. So we get a lot of compression and that baby's really up close. And it really, now we're really starting to feel like that frame is being filled by this monster. If I was imagining some, somebody running and this big beast chasing after them, I'd probably want to conceptualize that composition using a 200 millimeter lens so that I really feel like this huge beast is really right up on the tail of this character. Now let's look at this shot at the bottom where we have our three ladies and they're recreating a scene from training day or something like that, I don't know. They're, they're, there's a police stop and they've been pulled over, so to speak. Tinkerbell's the cop, Frankie Stein is the one driving the car in this particular case, and I guess that's Elsa, I'm not sure who I'm looking at, I guess we'll call her Elsa for, for the sake of argument, is, no, she's a fairy. I don't know who that, whatever, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm gonna piss off Chloe saying that. Now, using these different focal lengths conveys a very different story. In this particular shot, using the 10 millimeter, because I've got Elsa so up close and personal to the lens, and Frankie Stein and Tinkerbell off in the distance, and further emphasized by the fact that they're a little bit blurred out of the shot, okay? We really feel like Elsa wants to get out of this car. It's kind of like they're, she's giving out the ticket and everything like that, but Elsa's kind of close to the camera going, oh my get out of here, we've got to be there in 15 minutes, I don't have time for this. So you're really invested in Tinkerbell's thoughts because she's filling half of the frame like this and the other two are just off in the distance. So we can really get in on the face acting of Elsa. In the second shot, I, I didn't quite compose it the way I intended to because I kind of did it quickly. But in this particular shot, because I have that wide angle lens, I could actually use that to force Elsa out of the shot a little bit and create more of a composition for the two other actors here and to push my focus to them. So because I'm using a wide angle lens, we could go right past one and look at the other two in the background, creating more of a focal point here, composing the shot with Elsa, so to speak. So two different uses, just by moving my camera a little bit closer and cropping Elsa out of the shot slightly, although I didn't do a good enough job in this particular case. Maybe, maybe not, not quite. Now in the 35 millimeter, this is rec recreating more of what we'd see in real life. 
As we can see in this particular shot, Tinkerbell has mysteriously vanished and been replaced by a pony. I can't explain that to you. I have no idea how that happened. But the way I feel looking at this shot is, I'm standing outside the car watching what's happening right now. And I'm watching everybody. I'm invested in everybody's performance equally. I'm kind of just there as a bystander being a part of the action, so to speak. And in this last shot, I've shot this using 200 millimeters. And in this particular shot, because everything's so compressed, Elsa and Frankie Stein have been clumped together and I put my focus directly on Tinkerbell. So we get this really, really compressed image and it's kind of grouped them and put all of the emphasis on Tinkerbell. And look, in terms of sizes, if we compare the first one, look at how big she is compared to her in the scene. And here, they're all pretty much the same size. Even though they're kind of placed compositionally in the right places, they're, all of their heads are about the same size. So they're all occupying the same space and investing me, pushing me into that scene a little bit more, okay? Now these are only a few very minor examples. We can keep talking at length about it, but what I wanna do is open your eyes to this new world of composition, this new world of distortion, how you can play around with these different things. Watch the scene in The Incredible where Bob's working in insure care and the old woman's sitting there crying, saying she can't afford to blah, 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 and he's kind of sitting there rolling his eyes. Look how they used a telephoto lens to compress that bookshelf right up against his back and make him feel really flat and compressed in the shot. Compare that to the shot where Mr. Incredible's in the car and they, he, they use a wide angle lens right behind the steering wheel to get the entire cockpit of the car into the shot before he goes and he rescues the kitten out of the tree type of idea. Look at how these different lens convey a sense of action, convey a sense of depth, convey a sense of speed, convey a sense of boredom and depression to living day-to-day -day life where you're just watching the family eating dinner. Be the photographer in your own shot. There's a very big difference between me just pointing a lens at you and snapping a shot like that versus me taking a shot through the handle on my coffee cup, like that. I can frame my shots in different interesting ways. I can do all kinds of neat stuff. So hopefully I helped to open your eyes a little bit. Hopefully you can have a little fun checking out different people's photography and cinematography and all that kind of fun stuff and applying this towards your own work. You remember to come and join me every Monday, like today, to enjoy my behind the scenes episodes, as well as every month, my art talks, the Brush Sauce Theater Art Contest, every month as well. And don't forget about my private art mentorship, Lucid Pixel. You can check out all of the information below in the description. All right, so happy painting everybody. Happy photography everybody and take care.